Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talk. So in this video, I'm going to talk about these 10 climate commandments that they announced yesterday on Sunday at the COP27 and also look into the Georgia Guidestones and their 10 guidelines. Georgia Guidestones, of course, which just so happened to get mysteriously demolished earlier this year. So I'm going to talk about that. But first off, I uploaded a video yesterday, Fallen Angels, and YouTube put an 18 plus restriction on the video, meaning you had to be logged in to watch it, which was ridiculous because there's nothing in it to merit that. It's kind of crazy considering there are loads of videos of the most gruesome scenes from movies all over YouTube getting millions of views. Yet they managed to put an 18 plus restriction on a video which has absolutely nothing in it at all. You see, when you upload a video to YouTube, they have some uh, background uh, AI checking the content to see if it infringes copyright, checking for certain words, whatever. And they didn't flag anything when it was first uploaded. So someone must have watched the video an hour after it had been uploaded and then put the restriction on it. So they must be monitoring me. And it's interesting that they do this now that I am talking more about the Bible and what's going on and happening in the world. I also know of another channel that talks a lot about Revelation recently and it was completely removed from YouTube a couple of weeks ago. I think it was called uh, E511 Ministries. So as I've said many times before, come and subscribe to the website hugotalks.com if you want to remain in contact with this content. Also, I'm thinking that I might upload videos purely to the Hugo Talks website for a few days or for maybe a week, maybe next week, just to get me into the practice of doing that. Uh, so subscribe to get notifications of those videos. And to be fair, it's, it's not just YouTube. I'm not happy with any of these platforms. Obviously, I don't trust YouTube, but BitChute, you know, all they do is promote MAGA shields. Whenever I do get a video trending in the chart on BitChute, I just look at what else is in there and it's nearly all MAGA, Trump, Q, nonsense. And my video, it's only ended up in trending because it got views from the subscribers at the hugotalks.com website. Rumble is another one. As soon as you go on there, you see the same faces, Russell Brand, Andrew Tate, same old thing. Odyssey, you know, it seems slightly better. But, you know, I just don't trust any of these platforms. So I want to get into the habit of posting more on the website and having an audience, it, it motivates me to make these videos. So I've got, what, what have I got on here? 142,000 subs here on YouTube. It would be good to get more of those onto the website. So anyway, if you want to be notified of videos in the future, come and subscribe to the website as I will soon start putting more content on there exclusively. Okay, all right. Sorry for the uh, extended ramble here at the start of the video. But now we'll talk about these climate commandments. Here we see activists smash tablets atop Mount Sinai to launch faith-based climate push. So this is the UN, United Nations backed interfaith organizations I was talking about last week, if you remember. This event kicked off on Sunday morning with it, it says here, an Israeli environmental activist smashing mock tablets of stone atop an Egyptian peak believed by many to be Mount Sinai to symbolize the world's failure to protect the planet. Yeah, so you notice mock tablets, counterfeit symbology, copying, imitating, not authentic. Of course, this is to mock the original Ten Commandments and Moses, who broke the tablets in the Bible. It says here, uh, now listen to, the <laughs> listen to the names of the organizations involved. The long names they use in order to make them sound important and powerful. It says here, the Sinai Climate Partnership, symbolically launched at the ceremony, brings together the Interfaith Center for Sustainable Development, alongside the Elijah Interfaith Institute, the Peace Department, and the United Nations Faith for Earth Initiative, and the Gigawatt Global, and the Israeli Environmental Advocacy Organization. Whoa, what a mouthful, eh? They're all binding together like the Marvel Avengers to save the world. Okay, it continues. The group read from the new draft list 
of the 10 principles for climate repentance. That's your 10 climate commandments. Or as they say, it's a first draft. And these 10 conditions are formulated by dozens of multi-faith leaders meeting in London over the past few days. Abramowitz smashed two tablets on the ground. The act was a symbolic echo of the Bible's Moses smashing the Ten Commandments in protest after descending Mount Sinai. One of the, tab one of the tablets was painted green to symbolize the Green Commandments, it says here. So it's, it's a mock. Yeah, it's mocking. It's a ceremony. It's a counterfeit. It's an imitation ceremony. That's what it is. They can't come up with anything original themselves, and we all know why. So what are these 10 climate commandments? Green commandments, as they say. Now, it's at this point, I mean, don't, don't you think it's strange that the Georgia Guidestones just so happened to be blown up and destroyed earlier this year, a monument that had its own 10 commandments or guidelines for the earth. Isn't that strange? And now it's gone. And here we have this announcement of 10 climate commandments. It's, a, it's just another strange coinky dink, isn't it? Now remember this, as they say, it's an, it's an early draft of their 10 climate commandments. Apparently the Pope and his interreligious dialogue are going to involve themselves with this at some point in the future and em embellish upon this draft version, right? So let's take a look at these 10 climate commandments and compare them to the 10 Georgia Guidestones guidelines. Now remember, these are pretty vague, right? So number one on the climate commandments is we are stewards of this world, which basically is saying you are responsible for looking after the world. Now, from a biblical perspective, it kind of works, but it could be said that man should be in control of the earth, which is going into alignment with the whole man becoming God. Now, if you look at the first guideline of the Georgia Guidestones, it's about keeping the population below half a billion. And these new climate commandments are supposedly about protecting the environment. Now, these people complain a lot about overpopulation. So could they mean stewardship of the world by controlling how many people are born? And if that is so, then that goes against the whole go forth and multiply in the Bible, doesn't it? The second one is creation manifests divinity. This to me is again very vague and it's worded in a new age way. Just type in manifest divinity into a search engine and look what you will find. Again, number two on the Georgia Guidestones is guide rep reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. So creation, again, reproduction. We are in the same ballpark here. Number three, everything in life is interconnected. Again, vague. On the Georgia Guidestones, number three is unite humanity with a living new language. So we've got, you know, unite humanity, and oh, everything is connected. It's a very similar vibe. And connect everyone with a new language, a one world religion, a one world language. That didn't work out so well for Nimrod and the Tower of Babel, did it? Number four is do no harm. Okay, fair enough. Number four on the Georgia Guidestones is rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Again, there is a parallel there. Number five, look after tomorrow. Again, very vague. It's a draft, don't you know? Georgia Guidestones number five is, uh, or was, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. So a one world court, protect people with over restrictive laws. Again, you know, look after tomorrow is similar. Number six, rise above ego for our world. That means they don't want individuality. They want you to make sacrifices, although, these ones go into COP27, what was it, 400 different private jets flying in? They don't think that way. The Georgia Guidestones number six is let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. A one world court, is that something to do with the Noahide laws? Number seven, change our inner climate. Now, inner climate is psychological gobbledygook, basically telling you to change inwardly so 
you know, you can change the world outwardly. You should change your opinion. That's what they're saying. You know, change your mindset. They want you to change. How about a commandment that says, why don't you mind your own business? How about thou shalt not impose your will onto others? How about stop telling people what to do? You know, how about stop believing you think you know what's best for other people? What gives you the right to tell people what to think? It's these clowns who have the ego. You're the ones with the ego and you're the ones telling people not to have one so that you can tell everyone what they should think. Number eight, repent and return. Number nine, every action matters. Number 10, use mind, open heart. All very vague. You get the idea. Yeah, the Georgia Guidestones and these 10 climate commandments, they're kind of very similar. Yeah, the climate commandments are very vague and are supposedly a first draft. And then you line them up with the Georgia Guidestones, which are much, much more specific. But still, they kind of tally up, you know. So let us know what you think in the comments and come and subscribe to HugoTalks.com, the website, the links in the description and the comments. And I'll see you later.